Hearing loss is a problem many people face as they get older. According to the Mayo Clinic, more than half the population in the U.S., 75 or older, have some sort of age-related hearing loss. But doctors are worried about issues in younger generations linked to gaming. Recently, the World Health Organization released the first ever Global Standards for Safe Listening in Video Games and Esport Activities. And joining us now on the couch is Dr. Seth Weibel, an audiologist with Manhattan Audio South, to talk more about this. Um, doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. This is so interesting to me because you don't necessarily think about a younger population, right, and, and hearing loss, but why is video game play particularly risky um, when it comes to hearing? So the, the primary concern is the length of time that the children are actually listening to headphones, mm. right? The World Health Organization and the Institute of Tele Telecommunications Union set these standards, but they set them at a maximum of 40 hours per week, which would really only allow five and a half hours per day mm -hmm. of headphone use mm -hmm. between commuting, school, activities. There's not much time left for gaming. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like a lot of people might end up going way beyond that limit. Ex ex especially in New York. It. Yeah, <laughs> especially yeah the, New York. the commute time average for an adult to kid to school is an hour. Yeah. Um, that's okay. both ways. So an hour already gone. It's a lot of time. Both ways, five days a week. Yeah. Could prolonged exposure to those high volumes, especially when you're gaming, lead to something like that ringing in your ears, you get tinnitus? Absolutely. Um, so tinnitus is actually a subset of just like neurological firings, but it happens from overstimulation, right? So our auditory system gets fatigued, and then over time, tinnitus can happen. Okay. Yeah. So is this too many signals that have been coming for too long a period of time? Our brain just can't handle that? It can't handle it, and it actually weakens. So the oh. cilia weaken, we have a temporary threshold shift, which often, imagine going to a restaurant or a concert, you leave and you have that ringing, right? Mm -hmm. So your system is fatigued, and it can recover, but it can't do it time and time again. Ah. And this is where that risk for gamers comes in. Okay, so that leads to this question. How can a video game user in particular reduce the risks of long-term hearing loss? What advice do you have? Yeah, so the good thing is most of the companies now um, that do PC, Apple, Sony, they actually have settings in the consoles themselves that the parents can regulate and set them uh, to a maximum of like 60%. And that's a good rule, mm -hmm. uh, the 60-60 rule. No more than 60% of the volume for an hour at a time, okay? Oh. So it's really important that the parents, that the uh, gamers themselves utilize these settings that the companies provide. Are you supposed to take a break after an hour or something? You know how they say that with the yeah. visuals, yeah. right? Yeah. Like look away for 20 minutes and Correct. look at something 20 feet in the distance. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just you don't want to overdo anything. I see. Um, but again, it's really just the time. We mm. really, we don't have much time per day. We live in a noisy city. You know, New York is the second noisiest um, in the world, right yeah. behind Paris and Hong Kong. So we really have to take care of our ears. So what should somebody do? Let's say they might think they have that ringing in their ears or they might think their um, hearing is fatigued but they're not certain, what should they do? Yeah, so uh, we at Manhattan Audio South, we see patients on a daily basis who have that same thing. They're not sure, right? They have a little bit of ringing. They might wake up and say the hearing's a little bit muffled. So just book an appointment. We'll do a full diagnostic evaluation and determine. You know, I think the biggest issue is most people that we see, it's in their 60s, 70s, and it's their first hearing test. Mm. They've never been evaluated. So we don't know what their norm was. Mm. Interesting. We, we, so parents need to really think about that, it sounds like, as absolutely. part of their children's overall, you know, health and well being. Because absolutely. what do we know about untreated hearing loss and the other health issues it may be linked to? So long term, you know, there's a lot of studies that can that are proving that it's linked to dementia, Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and that comes from a lack of stimulation, right? When you can't hear often an associated symptom is that speech becomes unclear. When speech becomes unclear, that means the brain is working harder to decipher the speech, and it's taking away from other cognitive functions, such mm. as memory, executive thinking, to fill in those gaps. So all of those connections are kind of uh, basically united together, and if one oh, fails, absolutely. it sounds like the whole thing. It just, it's trying to pick up that load, yeah. and it really can't. Huh. Got it. Right. Got Important it. information. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of great information. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us this morning, no, Doctor. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. We'll be right back.